for this next section, you're learning the new parent functions for this chapter. The parent functions are the square root function and the cube root function. Um, my goal for you is to understand the key points for these functions, the domain and range for these functions, and what they have in common and what are different about them. The square root graph, um, it is a graph that rises up from the origin. The origin is the starting point on this graph. When you do translations, you are going to pay close attention to this key point. This is the key point that you're going to use for translations. Um, the other point that you should know about is the point 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1 is going to be the point that you use for stretches and compressions. And the way you'll use it is you will multiply your y coordinate by a to do your stretch or compression. Um, and um, the square root graph has a domain. If I go from left to right, it starts at 0 and it goes out to the right forever. So it goes to infinity. Um, there is a bracket on 1 because there's actually a point there. The range is also from 0 to infinity, but remember those are y-coordinates, so the lowest point is at 0. This graph continues to increase until infinity. The square root graph has no asymptote. It doesn't flatten out. It continues to rise towards infinity, and this graph is always increasing. The other parent is the cube root graph. So if I look at the difference between the equations, the difference is that the square root graph has an invisible 2 as an index. We don't usually write the 2 for the square root function. The cube root function has a 3 for an index. The cube root graph also passes through the origin. So the cube root graph has, that's the point that you will translate. And then it has two points that you're going to stretch or compress. You're also going to, you're going to stretch or compress 1, 1, and also negative 1, negative 1. You'll stretch then compress by multiplying by the y coordinate. Um, this graph is always in, this graph is, the domain range is easier. Those are all real numbers because both ends of the graph have arrows that continue on forever. Um, this graph is always increasing because it's always uphill. If I look at this graph, it's going slightly uphill, then very steep uphill, and then slightly uphill again. Um, and this graph has no asymptote. So um, if I look at my radical functions, my radical functions that I'm studying, that you're studying this chapter, are the square root of x function and the cube root of x function. Um, both of these graphs are always increasing. Um, both of these graphs pass through 0, 0 is the point that you'll translate. Um, and neither of these graphs have asymptotes. You don't have to worry about those dotted lines for asymptotes. Um, the non-essential characteristics, we're going to just separate these out as characteristics of the square root function versus characteristics of the cube root function. The square root function has a limited domain. The cube root function has a domain of all real numbers. Um, the other thing that's different about the two graphs is that um, there are negative values on the cube root graph. So 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1 are important points on the cube root graph. But on the square root graph, the only important point that you're going to be um, stretching is going to be 1, 1. Um, the... Um, 
examples. I just want you to make sure that you are very confident with the shapes of these two graphs. The square root graph starts at 0, 0 and continues up towards infinity, and the cube root graph passes through 0, 0, but it has that kind of curved shape up and also down. So the square root graph is in quadrants 3 and 1. Some non-examples. Um, sometimes people get confused with x squared and x cubed. The square root graph looks a little bit like an x squared graph turned on its side, but it only has one of the two halves. And the cube root graph and the cube graph actually look a lot alike. They're just turned sideways from each other. So um, we're going to be working a lot this chapter with these radical functions. So I'm going to have you make sure you know those two parent graphs for this unit.